Hello everyone, uh, my name is Jose Delgado. I'm a corporate commercial attorney. We specialize in structures and tax and property. And I'm gonna be talking to you guys about a couple of queries that are frequently asked by property investors or persons acquiring residential properties for themselves. First uh, issue we're gonna to tackle today is what options do I have when I'm looking to acquire property? Do I buy that into my own name? Do I put it in a close corporation, which you can still get one, you can't get them anymore. Uh, PDY Limited, or do I have a trust as an option, which is uh, often a mythical entity that we are sitting to debate today. So really it's a question of what are your short term, your medium term, your long term objectives? Are you buying to hold the property for your personal use? Is it a holiday home? Is it a commercial property? Are you an investor? So we could elaborate and spend quite a lot of time on the different options, but uh, essentially there are two main points that one needs to think about. And if this is a property for you personally, uh, what risk are you exposed to? As far as we're concerned, any person who faces any risk should ideally be looking to have this property in an entity other than in their own name. Uh, clearly, if you ever get sued or you're in business, you have exposure, uh, buying a property is a, a major purchase. It's a large acquisition, um, lots of costs involved. So if you are in the wrong structure, not really easy to uh, move the property into the appropriate structure if you made the wrong choice. So. Quite a lot of uh, effort or time uh, thinking must go into assessing which is the best option for you. So option one is uh, default. Most people buy property into their own name. Right? Very simple. Uh, it's in your name. Problem is if you run into trouble, you could lose your home. That's not ideal. Uh, at some point, uh, we will die. I uh, don't know anyone who's immortal. So, yep, you're eventually going to snuff it. And on your demise, you're going to have some serious issues to deal with. Uh, property is uh, caught up in your frozen estate, your spouse, your dependents, uh, other persons, uh, children don't, uh, don't have access to this asset until such time as your estate is wound up. That could take anything from about eight, nine months to one, two, three, four, five years. So you're going to be creating serious hardship for whoever is going to be needing to access that property or the rentals or whatever the case is. Uh, pretty expensive exercise to die, so try and avoid it at all costs. But your death will cost you uh, capital gains tax. The maximum rate at this point is 13.6%. So it's a fairly huge chunk that is going to be coming out of any growth of the property. So one must bear that in mind if the property is in your name on your demise. Uh, on top of that, you are your estate, not you, you will be uh, subjected to executor's fees, uh, also at a maximum legislated rate of 3.5% plus VAT, uh, just under 4%. Again, a massive chunk. And the kicker here is for you to consider that this is a charge on the gross value, not on the net value. Quick example, uh, property is worth uh, 5 million, you have a mortgage of 4 million, your net is 1 million, your executor is taking 4% of the 5 million, not the 1 million. So suddenly that's a massive cost on a small percentage, it seems pretty harmless. Then of course, uh, you are subjected to state duty at a rate of 20% on any assets in excess of uh, 3.5 million. So pretty steep. So if you're buying a property in your own name, just know that you have no asset protection, you're subjected to potentially massive costs uh, on your demise. And again, if you are renting your property out, not very tax efficient if you are in the top tax bracket because that rental income will be added to your income, further causing you tax uh, sort of issues or, or more tax to pay. Uh, other options are a close corporation if you can still get your hands on one or you have one, or a PTY Limited. Uh, a lot of people do consider this as an option because it is a known type of entity. Um, SARS pretty much has settled the taxation around this, so there's some level of comfort. Problem with this is a close corporation or company is not the ideal residential property owning entity because you will eventually pay too much tax as well uh, compared to a trust, which we're going to talk about in a minute. So PTYCC, your tax rate is 28%. To get the cash out of the company uh, or the CC, you'll be paying a further dividends tax, bringing you effectively to a tax rate of 38.8%. Also, uh, a default position is you can have a trust owning a company that in turn owns your property. You are multiplicate or you, you, you create an extra cost, which you can possibly avoid by having a more simplified structure. Not a great structure, a CC or a PTY, if you're ever selling a property, because you're going to end up with a huge capital gains tax problem in the company or the CC at an effective rate of 18.6%. To get your hands on the profits after tax, cost you a further dividends tax of 15%, bringing your total tax bill to just under 31%. So that's ouch. 
say in your personal name, the tax is a little bit better, but you have exposure to creditors, you have got issues on death, you have no continuity. CCPDY solving some of the problems, but not ideal from a tax perspective. Then we come to the mythical trust, which uh, uh, there are proponents who absolutely love them, or you have the naysayers who are absolutely anti them. And there's a lot of uncertainty because the taxation tends to be under the spotlight quite often with trusts. Default position, though, is it's an old entity. It's been around forever in this country, almost 200 years. A trust, very simply, is like a vault. I like to have people think of it as a vault. You're going to acquire your property into this entity. Tax is brilliant in the structure because you can move the income out of a trust. So even though it is an entity with the highest tax rate at 41% after the new budget a couple of weeks ago, the trustees have got the election to push any rental income down to beneficiaries who then pay at their own marginal rates. So this is where you have four or five children, or you bring in your mom or your in-laws, as many beneficiaries as you'd like to obviously then minimize your tax position. Also capital gains tax-wise, if you distribute your gain to a beneficiary, it's gonna be quite tax effective. Trusts are very handy as an estate planning tool. You will end up in a position where the assets will continue to exist in this entity. The, your demise will not affect uh, the ownership of the property because the trust doesn't die, very simply. In our law, there's no limitations or, or limitation on how long a trust can exist, so it can continue in perpetuity. So great estate planning tool. All your hard efforts and uh, your legacies will continue to future generations. No capital gains tax on death because the trust doesn't die. No estate duty on death because the trust doesn't die. No executor's fees. So it's pretty handy. So just to wrap up uh, in conclusion, the three options available to you, or four if you take the CC, bind to your own name. Okay, not very tax efficient if you're at the top tax bracket. Uh, assets exposed to creditors. On your demise, you've got trouble. Uh, CC PDY, a bit better than personal, but still not the ideal vehicle when you look at the massive capital gains, tax consequences, extra costs, etc. So for us, if you're looking for the whole package, it, it's a trust that you should buy it into. However, caveat, what is your strategy? Short term, medium term, long term, okay? Or is it a residential commercial property? So there's no hard and fast rules, but hopefully this has given you a bit of a heads up on uh, different options available to you, get you thinking about what's ideal for you.